As part of synthetic division and rational zeros theorem, let's talk about what all of this is about. We've talked and talked and talked about how important x-intercepts are, especially when it comes to polynomials. That even going back to the early Middle Ages, um, kings would have great festivals in which they'd invite mathematicians to come and, and the one who had created the best way of finding zeros of functions, that is hopefully x-intercepts, would, um, would win fabulous monetary prizes and become very, very rich. It was actually that important. Okay, so we are going to talk about this thing right here and finding the zeros of the function. And this, for something this big and ugly, that can be a little scary and take a lot of steps. In particular, all of these problems we're doing today are four step or more step problems. Let's graph this and take a look at it. You should always try to do that first. There. Okay, I want to type that in. And how... There. Oh, perfect. All right, so... <clears throat> five x caret 4, right arrow key to come down, minus 4x caret 3, right arrow key to come down, plus 19, plus 19x squared, there's already an x squared key, or a squared key, minus 16x, minus four. And this is a quartic polynomial. All right, so in descending order, very important because you need to make sure every power is there. And if not, there are steps we can take. But right now, let me make sure this is right, 5x to the fourth minus 4x to the third plus 19x squared minus 16x minus 4, and we will graph. Okay. Well, that's actually a pretty typical x to the fourth uh, graph. Let's get it a little wider though, th make the window a little better. I'm going to go zoom six so that we have a standard window and then graph it again. All right, now I'm going to try to make, well, I'll show you what I'll do when the time is right. But right now we have a general idea of what this looks like. It looks almost like x squared. And that's actually pretty common for quartic um, polynomials. Okay, so we are going to go through the steps here that you have to use and synthetic division is part of it, but the first part is not. The first part, part one, whoop, okay, all right. The first part, part one, is finding all of the possible rational zeros. Rational zeros are important because 
they give us the opportunity to find the exact answer. And if you're dealing with how to get more money, like, like the economy, which is what monarchs and world leaders all the way up to today care about, um, there's actually a whole large pool of possible numbers. If this, if this polynomial actually has rational zeros, um, they'll come from the, the list of all possible rational zeros that we're finding now. So what we have to do is we have to find P and we have to find Q. What P is, is all of the positive and negative integer factors of four. We don't look at the sign in front, we just think about the four since we're doing positive and negative anyway. Well, let's look at what four equals. Four equals one times four, and two times two. Not really big. So now we're going to do this. Take the eraser, erase the multiplication sign, and erase this second two. Well, I erased both of them. These are the integer factors, just listed one each, of four. So let's write them in order because it's always easier if you write them on in order. It's easier for you. One, two, and four. Now Q, we're also going to be finding Q. Q consists of all the integer factors of five. Well, five is a prime, so it doesn't have a whole lot. The factors of five are one and five, the integer factors. All right, and we're doing positive and negative on both. Now what we have to do is find P over Q. P over Q. And for this, I take all of the P factors positive and negative, one, two, and four, and put them over the Q's, positive and negative, one and five. This is going to give us, I'm going to take each of these, each of the integer factors of P and put them over each of the integer factors of Q. So here we go. One over one and one over five. Two over one and two over five. And then four. 4 over 1 and 4 over 5. And cleaning this up a little bit, we will have 1, 2, 4, 1 fifth, 2 fifths, See, one, two, and four, one fifth, two fifths, and four fifths. Plus or minus. Okay, and so this is what that means. This is a list of all the possible 
That doesn't mean they all are. Maybe none of them are rational zeros, but this is the list of all possible rational zeros, all possible rational zeros. Doesn't mean they are. plus or minus, that is positive or negative one, positive or negative two, positive or negative four, positive or negative one fifth, positive or negative two fifths, uh, talking and writing at the same time are very hard, two fifths, and positive or negative four-fifths. So making your list of all possible rational zeros comes first. Now this is what we're going to do with them. I'm going to get my graph and increase the size. And now what I want to do is change the window because I can see from the graph that I can come in really closely if I uh, only go from negative to to positive two on the x-axis. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change my x min to negative two and my x max to positive two and leave all the rest alone. Okay, looking at this, I am going to guess that that is one. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's one. So this is what I'm going to do. This is step two. Watch what I do. This is f of x, and I have a reason for writing this again. Equals 5x <clears throat> to the fourth minus 4x to the third plus 19x squared minus 16x minus 4. Now I'm going to come down below this and I'm going to list the coefficients. 5, negative 4, 19, negative 16, and negative 4. And then recall that I guessed that positive 1, which has to be in this list, positive 1 is my first guess for a rational 0. And when 0 is irrational, and real, they go together. Um, that means they're also x-intercepts. 
So right there. I'm going to take one and put it right here and put this backwards L around it. And then I'm going to come down here and draw a line. Now the whole goal of this, as I go through the steps I'm about to go through, is that if one is a rational zero, the number I get in this position will be a zero. If I'm wrong, it won't be a zero. Okay, now, bring down the five and just write it like that. Now I'm going to multiply, and I'm going slow for people who haven't seen this before. Five times one, the number in the backward cell. Five times one is five, and I put that number under the second integer, negative four. Then I add the two numbers, negative four plus five is positive one. I write the one right there. Now, I take this one and I multiply it by the number in the backward cell, which is one. So one times one is one. Now I add 19 plus one is 20. Again, I multiply. 20 times 1 is 20. Then I add that to negative 16. That will give me 4. 4 times 1 is four and negative four times uh, negative four plus four is zero. That zero means that one is a rational zero. Okay, you also have a quotient, which is, I'll show you in a minute. Okay. This was 5x to the fourth when we started. After one, one line, one complete um, synthetic division, which is what this is, might as well make a note. Synthetic division. There he goes, the per machine. Okay, this is 5x to the fourth. After I do my first synthetic division, this becomes 5x to the third, and then the powers go downhill. We have, we have a polynomial in perfect uh, uh, descending form, descending by degrees, powers of the variable. This will be plus because it's positive, 1x squared plus 20x plus 4. 
This is my quotient now. Now I have to guess at the harder one. That. And looking at my list. Not one, I'm not negative one, negative two, negative four, could be negative one fifth, could be negative two fifths. So it's either going to be negative one fifth or negative two fifths. Let's see. I'm going to do synthetic division again, but I'm going to do it on my quotient here. So I'll write down the coefficients. Five, one, twenty, and four. And I'm going to put my second guess, which is that that is negative one fifth. Remember, um, it has to be in my list of all possible rational zeros and negative one fifth is in that list. So I will put negative one fifth there. Then I'll come down under the fives and skip a line and draw a line. Four is the last number now. I'm going to come down underneath it and make this kind of forward L. If that is a rational zero, then I'll get a zero remainder here. If not, I won't. So I will bring down the five you always do that. The very first number you just bring straight down. Five times negative one fifth. Well, five times one fifth is one. So five times negative one fifth is negative one. So I put the negative one right here under the next number, not under the five, but under the next number, which here is one. And then I add one plus negative one is zero. Zero times negative one fifth is zero. 20 plus zero is 20. Now 20 times negative one fifth, let's show you all the steps to this, equals 20 over one times negative one fifth, 20. 20 times negative one is negative 20. One times five is five. <clears throat> negative 20 divided by five is negative four. I could have done that up here. I could have done to, gone to all these steps um, so let me do that for you, just so you can see how this is done. Or you can always put it in your calculator and then math frac. This five times negative one fifth is going to be five over one times negative one over five. That'll be negative five over five. Uh-uh. That's a positive five. Negative five over positive five is negative one. So that's how we got that negative one 
right there. Now 20 times negative one fifth is negative four. And four plus negative four is zero. Yeehaw! All right, now this, the quotient. Now first, this is a rational zero. And this is a rational zero. So we now have two rational zeros. of 5x to the fourth minus 4x to the third plus 19x squared minus 16x minus 4. Find the rational zeros. We now have two rational zeros. I don't want to lose track of them. So I'll write them here. 1 and negative 1 fifth. Meanwhile, our quotient, this right here, since I started with 5x to the third, has now decreased to 5x squared plus 0x plus 20. Now to find the other two zeros, because cortex have four zeros, I will just solve this quadratic equation, and we can always solve quadratic equations. Since we have a zero X, that's just zero. Okay, I'll subtract 20 from both sides of the equation. Notice the strategy before I go on. I started with a cortic. I used synthetic division once and got a cubic. Then I used synthetic division again to get a quadratic. You're always going to want to do that. Whatever you start with, you need to get a quadratic because quadratics can always be easily solved. You can factor when they're factorable. You can use the square root method here. You can use um, the quadratic formula. Always use that. You could have used it here with A equals 5, B equals 0, and C equals 20. Except that the square root principle is so much easier. So that's what we're doing here. 20 minus 20 is 0. So on the left I have 5x squared plus 0. And on the left, I have 0 minus 20, which is negative 20. Now, coming back to the left, 5x0 plus 0, no, 5x squared plus 0 is 5x squared. And that equals negative 20. Now, this is five times X squared. I have to isolate X. So X is trapped inside X squared. I'm going to have to trap that first. So I'll divide by five to get the five away from it. The fives cancel over here, leaving me with X squared equals Negative 20 divided by positive 5 is negative 4.
then I divide, I, I don't divide, I take the square root of both sides and I put the plus minus sign in front of the radical. Now the square root of x squared is x, and that's going to give me plus minus the square root of negative one times four, because negative four is negative one times four. But I want to make my radical smaller. There. So this is going to be plus or minus the square root of negative one times the square root of four. Well, the square root of four is two. So X is going to equal plus or minus I times two, which will be plus or minus two I. And now we have the other zeros, which is how they're referred to often um, in these problems. The other zeros, the other zeros are negative 2i and positive 2i. They're complex conjugates. Okay, now B. We were answering part A here. Now we're going to move to part B. Factor f of x. And it's a quartic, so there are four zeros. B. Okay, f of x. Here's the formula. A, the leading coefficient, which here is 5, times x minus z1, the first zero, times x minus z2, the second zero, times x minus z3, the third zero, times x minus z4, the fourth zero. Okay. So let me list all of my zeros. We have one, negative one fifth, negative two i, and two i. So, if I write this in factored form, I will have 5, because 5 is the leading coefficient right there. Times x minus 1, times x minus negative 1 fifth, times x minus negative 2i times x minus positive 2i. So we have to clean this up one more time. This will be 5 times x minus 1 times x minus minus is plus 1 fifth times x plus, minus minus is plus, 2i, times x minus 2i. And there is your answer. So we have answered all the questions. And it was synthetic division that permitted us to prove 
what the rational zeros are. So again, to find all of the zeros, you could always guess from the graph that the zeros are one and negative one fifth, although I don't know how you could be sure of that, but still that's only two zeros. Cortex have four zeros because their highest power is four. How do you find the other two zeros? The only way to do the problem is to do it this way. First you find your P, then you find your Q, then you find what P over Q is, and you cut it down until you've got a list of all possible rational zeros. Then, you use synthetic division on your best guesses that have to be in this list. Then you uh, once you oh then um, you need to somehow and using synthetic division this is how it's done you manage to take this quartic down to quadratic size and then solve the quadratic by whatever method you need to use and you've got so many methods now. And B, once you have all four of your zeros, you write your f of x in factored form. Okay, let's do another. Here we have the same kind of problem. Excuse me. This time we have a cubic, so we know there are going to be three zeros. We'll use synthetic division only once in order to change this from a cubic to a quadratic, then we can solve the quadratic. But first we find the P's over the Q's. So step one, this is part A. Step one, P, that's all of the positive negative factors, integer factors of 14. So we will have 1 times 14, 2 times 7. Oops, wait a minute. There. Now we get the eraser, so it's better to do this in pencil, but you don't have to, of course and put commas between these numbers. Because we're just making a list here. So we'll have plus or minus, and then a brace, one, two, seven, and 14. Now Q, is the plus or minus factors of the leading coefficient. But the leading coefficient is just one. So positive negative one are the only integer factors of one. So now we find P over Q, but notice we're gonna be taking all of these numbers and putting them over one. P over Q will be plus or minus 
1, 14, uh, 1, 2, 7, and 14. 1, 2, 7, and 14 over 1. Plus or minus is out here. Well, that clearly is going to be just plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 7, and plus or minus 14. So we'll have eight different possible numbers. Now with B, no, not B, 2. We use synthetic division. On F of X equals one X to the third plus 2x squared minus 7x to the 1 minus 14. But what number are we going to put into the backwards L? Well, I could put all of them in one at a time but that would be very, very time consuming. So I'm going to graph it and make a guess. Okay, so X caret All right, wait a minute. I'm gonna move this over here and this over here for just a minute. Um, okay, X to the third right arrow key to come down plus two X squared. And if I use the X squared key, I do not have to come down, minus 7x minus 14. So x to the third plus 2x squared minus 7x minus 14. Let's graph it. Right. All right. The quick way to get back to the standard screen is to push the zoom button and then six. Okay, so there are my zeros, one, two, and three. But all I need is one guess. And it sure looks to me, let me make this bigger. It looks to me like negative two would be a good guess, but just a guess. So I'm going to put negative two in the backwards L. and then skip a line and draw a line. Do that, now bring down the one. One times negative two is negative two. Two plus negative two is zero. It's the same thing as two minus two. 0 times negative 2 is 0. Negative 7 plus 0 is negative 7. 
negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. Negative 14 plus 14 is 0. Okay, that means that negative 2 is a rational 0. of f of x. This was x to the third. The quotient is 1x squared plus 0x minus 7. Now, to find the other zeros, which is the step three, and I should have put that as a step three in the other one. Maybe I did. We're going to take x squared minus seven, because zero times x is zero, equals zero because now we're looking for the zeros of that Add 7 to both sides. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. Bring down the x squared. Over here on the right, 0 plus 7 is 7. And then coming back to the left, x squared plus 0 is x squared equals 7. Okay, I'm going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. Square root of and plus minus square root of. Do you always do that? Yes. So, x is going to equal plus, well, negative the square root of 7 and positive the square root of 7. So, my rational 0 is negative 2. And my other zeros are negative the square root of 7 and positive the square root of 7. And now I'm going to write x to the third plus 2x squared minus 7x minus 14 <clears throat> as a product of linear factors. That is, the power of each x is only 1. And I need the leading coefficient, which is 1. OK. So part B. F of x equals A times x minus z1 times x minus z2 times x minus z3. Where z1, z2, and z3 are going to be, oh, negative 2. Let me do it this way. Negative 2, negative the square root of 7, and the square root of 7. A is going to be 1. So when 1 is multiplied by everything or anything, we don't show it. It's an invisible 1. So we're going to have x minus negative 2 times x minus negative the square root of 7 times x minus the square root of 7. 
So we will have x plus 2 times x plus the square root of 7 times x minus the square root of 7. And that's what f of x equals if you were to write it in factored form. The reason for writing it in factored form is so that you can see what the zeros are immediately. Square roots like this are irrational and can only be approximated, so this would be your most valuable choice right here. Since negative 2 is exactly negative 2. And that's how you use the rational zeros theorem. Now I have one more, and this one is going to be a pain, maybe. 343, that I need to factor that. OK, now it could be, though, that it's a prime. We could always hope. And then it would be a real problem. So let us use the calculator trick, which I feel completely justified using. Here's how. I take 343 and I divide by X. I don't graph it. Instead, I click the second button and the graph key to get the table of values there. So let's look. I'll have 1 times 343. I don't want any decimals. 7 times 49. Let me write those down. Um, 7 times 49. And 1 times 343, okay. So 1 times 3, 4, 3, and 7 times 49. Let's go down and see if we can find more. I'm betting we can't, but you never know. Yes, you do. Um, forty nine is seven times seven. So these are really our only possibilities. that I know of. They certainly don't look like a lot. All right, now Q. Notice that Q, Q will be the factors of five, the integer factors of five. Let's put commas between these first. 
I'll put them in order later. That's it for five. And so when we get to P over Q, that will be plus or minus 1, 7, 49, and 343 over plus or minus 1, and five. So this is going to give us a whole list. One over one and one over five and seven over one and seven over five and 49 over one and 49 over five. And 343 over 1, and, and th 343, and 343 over 5, plus or minus. Okay, so writing them in order. One, well, not in order. Seven, 49, 343, one fifth, uh, seven fifths, Forty nine fifths, and three forty three fifths. Which would be plus and minus each of these? I think you have to answer. Um, in the book, they present plus or minus one, plus or minus seven, plus or minus 49. Each, each number, each possible zero has its own um, plus or minus sign in front. So be aware of that. It's horrible. All right, so before I label it horrible, remember we only have to have one correct synthetic division. So let's take a look at the graph and maybe the graph is not so bad. Maybe. Okay. So we're going to we're going to clear. We're going to clear there. Okay. So, five x caret three, right arrow key, plus seven x squared, plus two forty five x plus 343. See, 5x to the third plus 7x squared plus 245x plus 343. Okay, let's graph this, honey. Cool. All right.
I'm going to do something here. I'm going to go to Zoom. And go down the list here. Zoom fit. And I'm going to see if that works any better. Okay. I don't know if negative one is a zero, but let's try. She said, whining. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Synthetic division. Here was part one in A. Here's part two. We'll put our negative one here. No, I won't because that'll get me messed up. No shortcuts. Okay, f of x equals 5x to the third plus 7x squared plus 245x plus 343. I'll write my negative one here. That's my guess. And then the coefficients, 5, 7, 245, and 343. Now I skip a line and draw a line. Bring down the 5. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. 7 plus negative 5 is 2. I don't feel good about this. 2 times negative 1 is negative. Um, and that'll give me 243. Minus 243 does not give me a remainder of zero. And in fact, Lord have mercy, hone in on this. I really wanted it to be negative one. Why can't I have what I want? <sighs> okay. Um, all right, let's get real close and look in here. Obviously, it's not negative one. It's, it might be a fraction or there might be no rational zeros at all. So I'm going to set my X min for negative two and X max for zero and we're going to look at where it crosses the x-axis. So negative two and zero. Graph. Isn't that cute? It looks to me like it crosses somewhere in here. So what do we have that might be a fraction? Seven fifths is one and two fifths. We could try seven fifths, negative seven fifths. If that doesn't work, I'm going to say there are no rational zeros, but let's try that. Oops, oops, come on, yeah. 
Let's try that, negative seven. No, let's put it up here. You see, here's the shortcut. <gasps> no, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, this, this, this won't do. We've got to go back to the original. Five, seven, 245 and 343 and draw a line and bring down the 5. Well, I do know that 5 times negative 7 fifths equals 5 over 1 times negative 7 fifths. The 5s cancel and I'm left with negative seven. So five times negative seven fifths is negative seven. Seven minus seven, or seven plus negative seven is zero. Zero times negative seven fifths is zero. 245. Now, 245 times negative 7 fifths. For that, I'm going to use the calculator. Okay, clear. 245 parentheses, negative 7 divided by 5, parentheses closed. Enter. Woohoo! Woohoo! All right, all right. Negative 343. You better write that down, though. Equals zero. which means negative seven fifths and negative one are rationals. Oh, negative one is not, mark that out. Negative seven fifths is a rational zero. Now, we have just come down one synthetic division, one successful synthetic division. Our quotient is going to be 5x squared plus 0x plus 245. Okay, so I take 5x squared plus 245 and set it equal to 0. Minus 245 minus 245. Two forty five minus two forty five is zero. So we'll have five X squared plus zero equals negative two forty five. So five X squared equals negative two forty five. Divide by five, divide by five. The fives cancel over here, leaving me with X squared equals, and as long as I have the calculator up, negative 245 divided by five is negative 49. I take the square root of both sides. Don't forget my plus or minus. X plus or minus the square root of negative one 
times positive 49, which is plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 49 equals plus or minus i times 7, which is plus or minus 7i. So your zeros are negative seven fifths negative seven i and positive seven i and so uh, we will write f of x as the leading coefficient five times x minus negative seven fifths times x minus negative seven i times x minus positive seven i. So we will have five times x plus seven fifths times x plus 7i times x minus 7i. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we use synthetic division. If you have a problem like this, going back to just the synthetic division, I want to show you how to do this real fast. Take your x plus 1, set it equal to 0. Solve for x. What you're going to get is x equals negative 1. This is going to go in a backward cell. Come over here. Rewrite this because you're missing a term. That minus sign should be in the middle there. Okay. Rewrite this as 1x to the third plus 1x squared plus 0x minus 2. That's because you're missing x to the 1, and we need the degrees of the terms to go downhill as 3, 2, 1, and 0. Constants are always degree 0. So now we have this in perfect descending order where 0x is a placeholder. Now we're going to do synthetic division this way. Negative 1. We're going to take the coefficients here of 1, 1, 0, and negative 2. Draw a line. Bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. 0 times negative 1 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 times negative 1 is 0. Negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. Your quotient is 1x squared 
plus zero X plus zero, which is weird, but it can happen. So your quotient is just X squared. Your remainder is negative two. So you'll see some of those uh, problems too in the synthetic division homework. You've got two homeworks, not a whole lot of problems in each one. Um, we went over three of the five problems, and one of the problems has a video. That's in the rational zeros theorem. Finding the zeros of, finding the rational zeros of polynomials. The uh, homework before that is synthetic division. And uh, you will see these synthetic division problems as well as these where you're going to have to use a placeholder. So just be aware that there are a few of those. OK, I'll see you Monday. If you haven't taken the test yet, study hard for the test and then get to work on your new homework. Bye bye. See you later.